Grow My Cleaning Company teaches owners of cleaning companies just like you how to grow your company, make more money, and finally take charge of your financial future and your life. This podcast is about automating and creating systems that give you time and money freedom so you can grow like crazy without losing control. Since this is totally free, if you're getting tons of value, want to support us and make sure that you get more of the good stuff, subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with my lovely bride, the prettiest guest I've ever had on, the amazing Natalie Campion. Um, she has a piece of acne right here, and she's really self-conscious <laughs> about it. So I wanted to point it out so we could all look at it, make fun, and then move on with our lives. And I know you're all saying, what do you mean make fun? I can't even see it. I know, but she's a psychopath and thinks that's all you can see. Uh, any comments on that before we dive in, love of my life? Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that love and support. This is the kind of stuff I put up with, Cleaning Nation. So, so if you want to look yeah. at what Mike looks like sleeping on the couch, this is it six hours before it happens. Um, all right. So every now and again, I have Natalie on. The reason is, aside from me enjoying hanging out with my bride and calling it work, is I feel like 60, 70% of our clients, uh, probably higher than that, are married, but probably over half are married and their spouse has some role in the business. And that oftentimes creates stress and frustration. And oftentimes one partner is all in on the business and the other one is all in on their partner, but maybe not as much on the business. And that creates a weird situation or sometimes they're both all in on the business. Um, typically that's not it, but even then it can just be like a work all the time. And where's, you know, where's the romance kind of thing. So I wanted to bring my bride in with the background that she with when it, when we started growing my cleaning company, it was just me. Uh, now, depending on how you count, we might have 20 people on the team and Natalie's not one of them. And she kind of was in that. I do everything. I do some things. I probably should be doing nothing, but I'm still working. I'm, Mike says I'm out of the business, but I'm really not. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Holy crap, I'm actually out of the business. Is that a fair <laughs> synopsis? Yeah, that's, that's pretty fair. Yeah. All right. So that's my perspective of kind of how it felt from my end. What did that feel like? For, so in our relationship, I would be the, I'm all in on business. I think about it all the time. I've been, I've mellowed a bit, believe it or not, in my old age. I'll say Natalie can uh, rebut it if that's not the truth. And Natalie is really into me because she's an amazing human being and committed to our marriage and our family and, and supporting me. Um, and she loves the members of Cleaning Nation. So, um, you know, she'll still hang out with the Millionaire Masterminds and folks, but the business part of it, I would say not inherently interested. Is that a fair aside from how it relates to me and you, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if I didn't care about business, I don't know that you'd be pushing business. Right. Yeah. I am not entrepreneurially minded. I'm kind of a worker bee. I think that there are people, I mean, not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Not everybody can be a worker bee, but you need both to make things work. Um, so I think that in that sense, we are actually a pretty good combination. Um, so I, you know, and, and I think a lot of people are like that. I think that's like a common dynamic in marriages. And so I think it's playing to those strengths where like, I was like, I trust you as a leader. You are an entrepreneur. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. I obviously, I think you're really bright, really intelligent, and it behooves me to support you in the way that you need so that you could kind of build these businesses and, and, you know, benefit our family and the people that we serve and the, and the people that we employ. Um, so I think, that balance, that dynamic uh, worked really well for us. And um, there wasn't really like a struggle. Like I didn't be like, I'm trying to take control of this business. It was like, you are in control and I kind of support. So big picture would agree a thousand percent. But when you dive in to look at a little nuance, there's some things that can get in the way. Maybe this will sound familiar to some of you guys. We can talk through how you can work through that in a way that's effective first for your marriage and second for your business. That's one thing I, I, I'd like to think we've always been on the same page, even though I don't act like it as well as I should. We always have the belief the marriage is way up here in our family and the business is down here. And if one of them has to die, it's going to be the business. <laughs> is that fair? <laughs> fair. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And again, I'm not saying I act like that perfectly all the time, but that is always my belief. And I try to act like it at least most of the time. Again, well, as I've gotten I older, it's gotten better. <laughs> What's that? I certainly um, believe that I need to support you and love you and um, and help you because it behooves me. But I certainly don't act that way all the time. But I think right. that's where problem solving and grace comes in a lot. Um, you know, yeah, it's, a marriage. It. It's, it's not about 
if you fight in a marriage, it's how you resolve those fights. Yeah, there's those couples, and pardon me if this is you. They're like, oh, we never fight. I'm like, that can't be a healthy marriage. Just something Lying. about it. Yeah, You're and again, all liars. Well, and I'm, you know, we don't need to scream or curse or treat each other really poorly. But I've raised my voice. I get frustrated. I express myself most of the time in a healthy way. Sometimes probably not. But we're passionate about. And she's same with her, right? And I don't delightful know. all the time. <laughs> same with her being passionate. She would never raise her voice. So. <laughs> The problem where that runs in when you've got a kind of big picture guy or gal and a work, and it's not always the man woman, by the way, kind of our dynamic is I happen to be the man, I'm more the entrepreneur, or she happens to be the woman, she's more the worker bee. We coach people back and forth all the time. Like sometimes the, the wife is the owner and the, the husband has a job or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so we're doing man woman, but please don't hear that as the norm. That's just our situation. Um, okay. So that said, the problem can come if I'm the entrepreneur and I've got all these grand ideas, but I'm not super detail oriented it can get a little feisty if I'm like, all right, well, I've got all these ideas, get to work woman. And you're the only worker bee. That cannot be great. So how does that feel? And what coaching can you give? Not just, well, you're out of the business, so you don't have to give it to me anymore, but to those out there that are like, Hey, we got a bunch of stuff done. And again, because I'm an entrepreneur, I'll work. So, you know, it'd be one thing. And I don't, this isn't who we really coach or who's in our program where the entrepreneur is like, Hey, I'm going to lay on bed and, 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 and watch TV. You're going to get to work. But the entrepreneur has this, I'll work 60, 70, 80 hours if I got to. It's not what I want to do, but anything for the business, I'll do it. And I just assume this poor son of a gun that married me, that happens to live with me, she's got that insane, insane desire. <laughs> you know, And it's like most of the spouses we work with have that willingness, but not that desire. So how do you as a spouse with maybe the I desire to support, but I, I don't, I'm not crazy like you. I don't want to work 100 hours a week. How can we work together so you can be happy and I can feel loved and supported? I think it's just about setting boundaries. Like we've talked about a lot about boxing time. Um, you know, like we kind of set rules up like, okay, well, we're eating dinner. We're going to put our phones away. We're not going to talk about business. We kind of talk business like eight to five or eight to six. And if there's a big project, sometimes there's more. And if there isn't, everything's kind of going the way it should, there's less. But knowing that there's like, okay, at this time, we're going to shut it down um, helps a lot, especially when you're like, hey, I've got all these great ideas. And as the implementer of those ideas, like the technical details, you're trying to share this big picture thing. And I think we've kind of had some friction with that in the past where you're trying to give me the 30,000 foot view and I'm down in the trenches and I'm like, okay, I got to do all these details. And these are all the plugins that I got to do. And I'm, my mind is spinning on how to make it work. And you're like, hey, come back up here, come back up here with me. Um, so maybe splitting up that time, like instead of... Um, constantly kind of always talking about everything being like, okay, well, we're going to talk about the details eight to five. And then maybe like five to six, I've got some big picture stuff that I want to talk about and not the minutia. Um, just like, you know, breaking that out and knowing that there's an end to it um, helps because, you know, great ideas are great, but they take a lot of work to put it, put together. Well, in both ways, right? Like if you, so again, the example you use like 90% was taught were the minutia. I wouldn't even, I don't know that I'd sign off on that, but I think it's important that we agree whatever your, the type of project where you are in your business, the ratios of how much on versus in details versus big picture may change, but the agreement, Hey baby, we're going to talk big picture. So I know you're immediately going to want to look at what software we need and what, how you want to get to started and blah, 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 but we're not there yet. Stay with me up here at 30,000 feet. And then once that gets done as an entrepreneur, as a visionary, we go, all right, well, we're done. Get to work. And she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I've got a thousand <laughs> questions. So now we need to be like, okay, but if I spend too long in visionary time, she's going to go nuts. So we, we do have to cap it. And even if I believe and say I'm right, it needs two hours of discussion, but her ability to absorb or stay engaged in that conversation is 21 minutes. We need to make it 21 minutes, right? I could be frustrated or yell or jump up and down or try and like keep going, even though she's not able none of that's going to work. We just kind of have to recognize our partner's limitations and abilities to absorb or do. Then the reverse goes, right? You might go, we need to talk about how to do these details for six and a half hours. My ability to absorb on the detail part might be 21 minutes, right? And if you try and make me go over, I'm just, I'm just going to check out. So I guess really identifying whose roles are what, and it doesn't have to be like, you do operations, I'll do sales as much as kind of who's the, the big picture and who's the implementer. Not that the big picture is going to do no implementation, not that the implementer is going to have no big picture, but kind of who's in charge and, and just be clear on when we're talking about which. The other thing I want to encourage you guys, and I'm dying to hear Natalie's perspective because I've never heard it like question asked and answered just 
thoughts. Um, Just me screaming at you and describing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then I, you know, I kind of try to tune that out. So I don't know if I hear it as well. <laughs> I think everyone that hears these was like, man, their marriage is really struggling. <laughs> I think they, they, there's a cry for help. They're doing it in public. Somebody, you know, some counselor called them. Um, I think we have a lot of fun with each other. That's we do. I, and again, yeah. we, it's a, we, it's a little easier to be harsh on her because she's out of the business and she's just doing what she wants and it's great. So it's easier to kind of poke fun because there's no, um, we're just not living that right now. So, for me, I got a lot of unexpected benefits when Nat, when we transitioned Natalie out. Um, I was for sure using her as a crutch that was not only not helping me, it wasn't helping the business because I could kind of have her do my harebrained schemes. And because I'm doing the huge air quotes, <laughs> non-video folks, um, it was free. That's the air quote word because it was, you know, I always tell you, you know, the owner's time are the most valuable. And if she or he is your partner, they are an owner. Um, so whether it's you or he, that's the most valuable time we have. So I'm like, oh, because it's free, I'll just do this and that and the other. And then she might've felt like it allowed me to kind of execute start executing on ideas that maybe weren't all the way thought through that had I had to pay for it, I would have um, done it. So getting her out allowed me to think through a little more clearly what I wanted to do. And it also kind of made me feel independent, right? One of the problems with spouses are they have this belief of, oh, I could never do it without, right? Um, what did that feel like on your side, good, bad, or ugly? You mean before we started hiring people and then that transition? Yeah. When I was, in, yeah. What did that feel like? Well, both. Cause there's really three stages. That I think a lot of you guys have been in and want to be in one. We're just working together, which is fine for a time Two, I want to get you out, but I can't right. Maybe what either way, maybe I'm like, I feel bad. I feel guilty. You're working too much. You're amazing. You'd stay forever, but I feel bad. Or, and again, I'm doing this for the listeners or you're done right? You're like, mm -hmm. I'll keep trying, baby, but I'm just telling you, I am burnt out. And if you're telling me we're going to give up the marriage of the business, it's going to have to be the business here pretty quick because I just can't do it. So regardless if it's me, that's the impetus or you, that's the impetus. There's that point of trying to get them out. And I feel like we did it too. Like uh, the old sign like a two episode. year long process. Yeah. Off and on. It wasn't a straight yeah. through. Um, like the Seinfeld, he talks about how the first breakup doesn't work. It's like a Coke machine. You got to kind of get it rocking before you can knock it over. I felt like that was our experience. So what did it feel like being in it and happy? What did it feel like being in it ready to transition out? What did it feel like transitioning out and failing? I don't mean you failed, but we feel like the hope, the light at the end of the time, I'm out, I'm out, no, nope, back in. And then what was the secret to finally transition out kind of for good? So the very beginning, it was exciting, right? Because I think we jumped right into owning a business. You know, as we got married, we were kind of like, doing that. So I had just so no you guys experience. all know, I, I owned a business for the last 20 years. Natalie and I at 25 now. Natalie and I have been married for 10. So I when she said we jumped in, it's not like we got married and bought a business. Right. I was an entrepreneur throughout when we got married. She probably because I'm a psychopath, just jumped right in. Like that's not a, I don't know that that's a normal thing, but it felt normal for us. So anyway, just to be clear, had a business, have always had a business. When we got married, she joined me in the business, but it's not like we started a business together. Go ahead. Correct. Um, so we kind of jumped into that and it was exciting because I wanted to be this partner, you know, like every wife wants to be this amazing helper and supporter of their husband. You feel connected in a way that like, I, you know, I didn't want you to have this other business and then this wife, I wanted to be a part of it. And it was really cool. And, um, you know, huge learning curve, right. Cause I had always been a worker bee for somebody else, not an entrepreneur or a business owner. And even though I wasn't on the same level as you, as far as like, decisions in the business, it was certainly more entrepreneurial than I had ever been. So super exciting. And you were a wonderful and terrible teacher. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I think I gained a lot of skills in that. And I think we became closer because of that. Um, so let me jump in just with my perspective for all the partners out there that kind of got sucked up into their business from my, and I'll tell you too, I want you to hear, it, but it's good for clean nation. It really made me feel loved and supported. Had Natalie been like, do whatever you want. I'm not going to stay in your way, but you know, if it costs money or I got to spend time, I'm out. That would have been this business that we have would not exist. It just, there's no way. So just so you guys and gals know when you're the kind of supporter, right? They've got the, they were the primary start of the business and you come in. That's huge. I don't want you just to think like, Oh, we need to do it for money or, or he doesn't notice or she doesn't notice. Or it's not a big deal it's for me at least. And for the entrepreneurs I know it's a huge deal. Like it is, 
that's not even my love. I don't even think that's a love language helping with business, but it, for all entrepreneurs, that's a big deal. Like that's my, that's like my, it's like if I had a son and again, obviously son, children way up here, businesses down there, but if I had a son and she wasn't super interested, like, yeah, he can live here, but don't let him talk to me or I don't want him to inconvenience me. Obviously that'd be impossible for us to have a relationship. Um, the business isn't on that level, but you can see, if I feel, you know, we, a lot of us feel like these businesses are our children. And if our spouses are just like not interested, that's a, a roadblock. Okay. So at first it was exciting. And I can vouch from my perspective. It did feel like Natalie was like, I'm all in, I'm helpful. And even when it was hard, which was a lot, cause I'm a pain in the ass. I'm great to you guys. I'm terrible. My poor bride. Um, <laughs> it was tough. There, there's some times I'm sure she felt like not worth it. So anyway, continue. Um, and then, you know, we, we sold that business and we started a new one and we were both new in that one. And I think we didn't really realize what all what would entail in the new business. Right. Um, and so it was kind of, I was taking on more responsibilities and we were both kind of learning at that time and we didn't know the, 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 the full, uh, the full picture. And that's kind of when things started getting a little wonky where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm trying to figure this out. And you're like, I do know what I'm doing, but I'm also still trying to figure this out. And it became a little bit more imbalanced, um, and Which was tough because I felt again. that's when I needed you the most, right? The most it was right. about the more I leaned on you and less you probably wanted to have to be apart. Right. And, and it's funny because like we had, we had gotten a taste of it and, and that was with the dealership. We, we had a taste of it where we tried to figure it out and then realized, oh, we, we needed this contractor to come in and do this because like this is way beyond Natalie's capacity. Like even if I like, you know, I, I tried my, my hardest, but it was just not my wheelhouse that's a huge point. There's very few things, but some things I asked Natalie to do that she tried and she was just never going to be good at. Um, for me, details. Like if you made me sit down and do a detail or I remember one of my first jobs was like a filing job I had for like a month and I got fired because I was terrible at it. I just can't think that way for, you know, hours at a time. So I think that really as entrepreneurs, kind of the impetus is this, it's your responsibility to, for everybody, whether it's your spouse or not, to recognize, am I asking this person to do this thing that's outside of their wheelhouse? Even if we lie to ourselves and say, but I need, it's so important. No one else can. You're the only, that's the lie that I think kills us, right? For First for our spouse, oh, if I, Natalie's got to do it, no one else can do it, no one else can do it. That's a lie from the pit of hell that's going to enslave you to your business. And then once we get rid of, not get rid of, but once they transition out and we stop telling ourselves that lie, then it all comes on our head. Oh, I have to do all this stuff, right? And the reality is that's a lot of what we do in our coaching is teach you to understand there's really nothing in your business you have to do, right? There's, there's almost very, I shouldn't say that. Day to day, there should be nothing. The business should be able to operate. So if you've got a, an employee, whether it's your spouse or not, and you depend on them for the thing to run, all fun and games. So they get sick, go on vacation, quit, die, <laughs> steal all your employees, like become a competitor, whatever thing may happen. It's a mess. Okay. So started off, I was excited. You were excited to help. That was like the honeymoon phase for our business. Mm -hmm. Then it got into, man, things are chaotic and it's kind of grinding on Natalie. And she's like, I signed up for kind of some of this, but maybe not all of this. And then through hard work and probably Natalie being a better spouse than she, than I deserve, we got through that. How, did, once it, we kind of got to the, okay, I can get out and we got to wrap it up because we're running on time. How, what was the trick? What, what was the difference between we tried to get you out and we kind of backslid and here you are back again. And okay, she's actually out for good. So the, I think the big difference is because it was just kind of you and I, in the beginning, I was doing a lot of the other things that you did. You did the big picture stuff. You did the coaching, like that was your strength. And I did all this other minutia. The problem is, is that it's hard to find that one person, right? Like I was doing it because I was your spouse and I loved you and I was committed. And this is like super important to us and our family, but trying to find one person to do all of that was. And let me just give you guys an example. So you get like, what, what are you talking about? What is she doing? Like she, Natalie's great at ClickFunnels. She's great at, um, she did the accounting. She, um, when we had kind of little projects, she'd handle that. She'd order stuff for vendors. She got the taxes together. Hopefully you're hearing, these are not similar tasks. The person that can do the accounting is probably, oh, she would do the graphic design for her stuff because she she is really good at that. Um, but a person that's good at graphic design, <laughs> what's that? The events. Like, yeah, yeah, she would know. schedule the, yeah. And there's nobody, including Natalie and including Mike, that's good at all of those things. Th what the only thing that made her qualified was she was willing and she was there and she would work for free, which come on for any other employee, we would hire like, all right, I'm not particularly good at 60% of the things you're going to ask me to do, but I can't quit. And I'm here. Those are my qualifications. Who's going to hire that person? Like that's a terrible hire. And then we're shocked when things don't go well. Um, so what was the trick? How did we finally get you out of that? 
out, out of that. We're going to try and get rid of you. And that's the problem, by the way, when we're like, we kept trying, didn't work is because she had too many things to do. I, I couldn't, right. I thought, you know, it was like, oh, well, and to be fair, I mean, not to minimize what you're doing, but you were probably working 30 hours a week. It wasn't like it was 40 or 50 when we started oh, transitioning you out. Yeah. When we were tra- transitioning out, like, cause we could kind of started, um, you know, with, with Lindsay, who was just, well, but prior to that, but, either way, it wasn't yeah. like she's working hundred hours a week and I couldn't have replaced her with one person because it's too many hours. Call it 40 hours. Maybe some weeks it was 30, maybe some hours 50, but let's just call it an average work week. It wasn't that she was, we hired like six people to do it. And it wasn't because she was working six, 40 hour, six, 40 hour weeks. She was doing six jobs that took zero. Well, not zero, obviously. Well, depending on the week, like graphic design, one week might take 20 hours for seven weeks after that might take nothing. Right. Um, Whereas, you know, the accounting would take a little bit each time. So yeah, how did, what was the difference when we finally re- recognized, holy crap, she's doing seven different jobs that all at seven different part-time jobs, right? It's not like you're doing seven full-time jobs, but it was just because of the math. We're like, oh, they can't be doing that much because she's only working for, not only like I'm trying to be dismissive, but we, we, we were like, it's a 40 hour week person. She's working about 40 hours a week. We should be able to replace her with one person, which is insane. So what was right. the magic? How did you feel like the- you finally did it? Well, the magic was figuring out all the different tasks that I was doing and then finding people who were extremely good at those tasks. So it's like, I can only do one human being's capacity for work in a week, but, and, and, and all of those tasks, I can do at a pretty like average to mediocre and sometimes better level than others. But if we've got people that can do each one of those things and excel at them, th- that was huge. It was it was a crutch. It was really not serving either one of us to have me doing a bad job at all of those things rather than going, okay, what exactly do we need? And then hiring the right people to do those. And so, then I just sit back and. As is her, and come on a podcast periodically and uh, <laughs> yeah. come, to, come to our live events and, and go to Mastros with me and the millionaire. Uh, maybe formerly Mastros, different story for a different day. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so anyway, the, the big thing I want you all to take away is a, make a distinction between what you feel. Cause I certainly felt like a long time. I have to have Natalie do this. If she didn't work 60 hours a week with me, this will never fly. The reality was if I'd done a better job of focusing our time and our efforts, I wouldn't have needed her. Certainly there were times when she was so helpful, but that's really at the beginning. Once you're semi up and going, that shouldn't be the case. The problem is that it doesn't naturally go away. You have to, as an owner, take it, you know, decide Two, be crystal clear on what that person does. I think it was, looking back, I'm like, how would have I done this? But I think we really did. We tried to kind of get people to do your job before we'd really clarified what your job, we thought we were clear on it, but had I, and that's why we have coaching, right? Had I given it to one of my coaches and said, here's the, and we didn't have one of our coaches walk us through this. We have them do a lot of stuff with them, whatever mastermind I was in. I don't remember taking that to them, which is insane. So for all of you that are in our group or any group uh, where you're kind of in a paid mastermind, paid coaching, this is the type of thing your coach should be walking you through. I'm, I'm just realizing I had a coach at the time and I didn't take this to them. Um, because yeah, had I brought that this concept to them, they would have said, tell me exactly what she does. I would have brought the weak job description that we had done and they would have torn it up and that would have solved it. Um, and then three, I think we tried to get you, we tried to pull the rip the bandaid approach. Like we'll just have you out a week from tomorrow or something right. unrealistic. And that wasn't, and then she'd be out for a little bit and then swing. That was like a rubber band. We just pull it hard and would snap back as opposed to taking two months to go, this is five or six hires and it's, it would be irresponsible, unreasonable, it's just ridiculous to think we can hire all five of these people in a week. It's stupid, but we can hire one. Let's pick the easiest one. Like, oh my gosh, the, uh, maybe the, or the, the one that you hate the most and whatever. And you're like, we get an accountant, right? And that might take a week or two. And now your job goes down by 16%, right? And you just, so had we kind of taken a more measured approach, I think we'd have gotten better. All right. Um, we are way over on time. Anything I've missed that you want to add to, for the value of cleaning nation out there that is working with their spouse and would like to either do it better or stop doing it altogether? Um, I just, you know, the one final thing that's super important is just understanding that your spouse uh, is trying to help, right? So they have limitations, but when they fail, it is not an intentional, like I'm trying to, you know, mess with the business or I don't care. Like we're human and we do better when we have somebody lifting us up and recognizing our weaknesses and trying to bolster us up rather than like beating us down for our um, our deficiencies. I think that's really important. And by the way, that works with every human being in the face of the earth, not just spouses, right? Every employee would say we work better when you encourage us as opposed to not. Right. So the one thing I'll give you that I did wrong 
not that I only did one thing wrong, but the one thing I did wrong I'll end with is Natalie got the special level of treatment, good and bad. Obviously, I love her more than I would love any employees. That's good. But then I would be familiar with her because I felt like she couldn't quit, so to speak. I would treat her not as well, you know, like kind of had this, oh, she can't quit. What are you going to do? Not that I did that consciously, but subconsciously there was that she's kind of stuck. So definitely recognize that and show appreciation to all employees and really focus on what they're doing well. And by the way, at the end of the day, always owner's fault, right? So if Natalie is the worst ever and she screws up everything she touches, is that Natalie's fault or Mike's fault? Well, Natalie screwed up everything she touched. Mike hired her, didn't fire her, continues giving her more stuff. That would be Mike's fault, right? So it's always- even started sleeping with her. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, after, yeah, after we hired Jess, massive sexual harassment. Anyway, guys, gals, <laughs> appreciate the heck out of you. If you're like, yes, I would like more systems and process as in the skills and abilities to get my bride out of the business, even better, me out of the business and have this thing run it. Uh, run itself as opposed to me running it. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com. We're doing a live event pretty quick, romancleaningcompany.com forward slash event. See y'all there. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're fired up, ready to grow, and want to see if you have what it takes to work with us at Grow My Cleaning Company, here's what I want you to do right now. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. That's growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk to book an appointment to speak with me personally. I'm going to jump on the phone with you to get you crystal clear on where you are now, where you want to be, and how to get you there. Don't walk around in the dark any longer. If you are serious about growing your cleaning company, it's time to finally get the systems in place that you need to grow. We've helped hundreds of owners of cleaning companies not only grow their business and their personal freedom, but give back to their community as well. If that's what you're looking for, head over to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a time to talk with me personally. I can't wait to get to know you and your business.